in the past, let's say, a year, year and a half, I've dealt with uh, replication inside OpenLab and dealing with multi-master side of the things. And given that there's not much documentation to be had officially, uh, this is one way to <laughs> rectify it. <laughs> it's, it's a step forward, at least. Uh, everyone, just as Ludo uh, said, we need replicas. If it's an application having a, having a uh, internal convenience copy, if it's a satellite uh, environment needing it for uh, whether if, if the link is uh, potentially going out or just performance reasons or if it's actually a disaster recovery replica uh, that's potentially going to be serving as a uh, full-featured LDAP server uh, to step in if the, if the current one uh, falls away. We still need to keep, keep a copy of the database, so we might as well do it on the LDAP level, and that builds, that way we build a distributed system, and a distributed system needs to be able to be fault toler tolerant. And that's not always trivial. Uh, distributed systems have to deal with breakage. Your node might go go down, your communication might go down, and uh, I guess we're dealing with we're dealing with data stores, and they're usually transactional in one way or another. LDAP defines the, tran the, the, the meaning of a transaction, and uh, every one of you is probably uh, familiar with the ACID, uh, ACID. Uh, how how to do transactions in a in a simple environment where you can provide atomicity, uh, consistency, isolation, and durability. This is not something you can provide in a distributed environment. Uh, a helpful thing that describes what you can actually do is the cap theorem. You can provide convergence to make sure that all of your replicas will eventually, uh, if you stop. If you stop making changes, they will eventually agree on the final state. Uh, availability, that if you can contact one of the replicas, you will be able to make changes or, uh, yeah, make changes. And persistence, the fact that you can actually, uh, if, if something is accepted, it will be reflected in the final state. The cap theorem says you can only pick two. Because because of what can actually happen, your uh, anything that any any con uh, communication uh, can be disrupted, for, uh, things can go down, and you can get things reliably onto the other side in the way that you'd like to. So you either usually in a data source, you want to converge, otherwise you can just throw it away and. Uh, it's it's not serving its purpose. So you so you either provide availability or persistence, but you have to pick. You have to choose. Uh, in terms of build up, the the what you the simplest way to maintain a replica if you don't really need any updates locally is you can search, get a com get a copy. Next time, search again. Drop drop the local copy. It's very simple. It's very inefficient. Uh, that's why the syncable protocol exists to make that simpler. It in the base state it works the same way. You just search, you get the data. The next time over, you get a you get a cookie that establishes a session, and you can you can do uh, you can be much more efficient if, if your provider can actually provide uh, can actually supply you with uh, uh, can internally decide how to how to deal with it. Uh, it's based on it's standard based. Uh, uh, it just uses one extra piece of information just to locate the entries. Uh, UUID is used uh, to uh, the client needs to be aware of how to identify an entry even if it's moved. So the UUID is stable across renames. That's the only thing, and it's it's a regular search apart from the fact that you need to be able to deal with controls and inter uh, intermediate responses. That's what I'll uh, describe quickly. Uh, 
in terms of open node app, which I'll talk to uh, talk about later, uh, the actual implementation for Syncripple is there in in the core. Uh, the provider is a separate overlay, the Syncrepl overlay, and to, together they are mostly stands. They are compliant. Uh, interoperation is a bit tricky in some ways. I'll talk about why later, because Multimaster just throws a few things in that make it impossible with uh, just uh, staying uh, interoperable with any with an arbitrary uh, syncopal implementation. So, as usual, you would just search. You're, you're a simple client. You want to you want to copy. You just you know nothing yet. You start a search. You don't know anything, so you just say. I'll, I want to do Syncrable, I don't know anything yet, I'm not giving you a cookie. And it will give you uh, entries. Each entry will have a, the u unique identifier attached to it. And then you get a, then you get a, uh, an, a notification, yeah, so it's finished. This is, the fi this, is, this is what you provide me at the end, uh, the next time you want a refresh. And uh, this is it. If you if you had anything else that you have stored locally, you can get rid of it. Next time, you can the next time you check, the server can tell you these entries. Uh, you still get the entries. Uh, they could be they could be marked as present, so you just get the end the UID, so you can match it and say this hasn't really changed. You can keep it. You can get a, an ad notification saying this entry has either appeared, changed, or moved. It's up to you to figure out what's happened. This is the UID to, to let, that lets you match it to, to your own uh, records. And af after you've received all of them, this is finished. If you have anything else in your database, you can wipe it now because it's not, it doesn't exist in, it shouldn't exist in your replica. Uh, can still be inefficient. Some servers can only do this. Some servers can actually tell you uh, that things have disappeared from, the, from their copy since last you checked. Uh, so this first bit is <laughs> for a uh, present phase because it shows, you, it shows you what entries are present in that should be present in that replica. If the server can actually tell you what things should have disappeared, that means you don't have to keep a, keep a list of things that, that are new. It, it, you can actually change. You can actually check uh, what things have gone. So you, you, you transition over to the uh, delete phase, get a bunch of deletes, and the server can say you've done everything. You don't actually have to do the, the final step, which is wipe anything that I haven't told you about. So if there's no changes happened, the only thing that you get is uh, the response, uh, the the final the final response saying this is the new cookie. If it's changed, well, you still you still get the unchanged cookie anyway, and the fact that you uh, that the deletes have been applied already in terms of that conversation. So you don't if you since we you receive no deletes, you don't actually have to delete anything. Uh, the database is big, and uh, so many things have either stayed the same or have been deleted. You still get each and every each and every one of those, apart from the intermediate response, is still an LDAP entry uh, response. So you have to be provided with a DN, even if you don't really care about it, because the only thing you care about is your UID, and you need to be told whether it's been added or deleted. Uh, to make it a bit more uh, efficient, you can be, uh, they can be batched together as an, another type of intermediate response that just gives you a bit, bunch of UIDs that these are unchanged or these have been deleted since, you, since last you checked. Uh, so that's a quick rundown. Uh, to, uh, sometimes you, your application is uh, 
time sensitive and you don't the previous one is you oh, come on. Um, you've checked next day next hour however often you check again if you if you if it's time critical and you want to be appraised of things as they change uh, you don't want to do you don't want to hammer the server all over because it's it's still a full search it can be a bit more efficient but it's still a full search so you can keep you can say that you want it to stay open and get changes as they happen uh, for that you change the mode at the beginning to be a refresh and persist the the, the previous stuff still happens but instead of getting a search response to terminate that operation you, you get an intermediate response saying you've Call up. This is your new cookie, and from now on, I'll be giving you up updates as they happen. So the updates could be an add, something's been added, modify. This time is it. This time is actually separated. Doesn't really have to, I think. But if this time is actually se separated. It's it's this entry has been modified or moved, and a delete. This entry has disappeared. You can get a cookie with the entry, or you can get a separate intermediate response saying, this is your new cookie that you use next time. You need to use it. You can, uh, and then if you, if you need to shut down or terminate the connection, you just cancel or abandon this, this search if you need to, and reuse the, the last cookie that you got. So this is a quick random. I think I'm OK with that. Uh, what happens if? You want to be a well. This is this is from the point of the of the client. You, you need to be able to deal with all of these things, uh, refresh and persist if you want to, all of these whether you want or not. Uh, from the point of the server, it still needs to it needs to be able to figure out what's changed. So uh, it can it's and fully entitled to. Uh, know nothing and then just run the search and just uh, just do just do this as if you as if you never did anything sometimes that's a valid fallback uh, sometimes it can just so uh, yeah I don't know what's disappeared so I'll send you everything it can it's entitled to save the entire database in the cookie and then read that out away from read that out from the cookie compare it to the existing database and send you the changes together with the new cookie. The cookie might be a bit big. Uh, but hey, uh, if you send a bogus cookie over, uh, it's just do all or un uh, unusable. It can do two kinds of things. It can either say, yeah, this search is not going to go anywhere, so you might as well drop the cookie. Uh, it says you, you'd better refresh from start. Uh, so it, aban uh, it fails the search immediately. Or it could just go, go ahead and uh, pretend that you've never provided a cookie in the first place and start from scratch. Uh, what it, that's, another, that's another thing to be aware of. Uh, yeah, we could make things a bit simpler or complicated, certainly more efficient if we transfer modifications. Because at the moment, you just get entries. You get the final state. Uh, that way, you, you can replace the entry with a new one. Uh, apply any modifications, but it's up to you. You just replace the entry, move it wherever it needs to be. And uh, that means if the entry is big, you're transmitting a lot of data for no apparent reason large groups again uh, you can you can replicate changes that's an extension of uh, open all up where you maintain kind of a journal of of uh, of things that happen uh, the access of all, access lock overlay can do that with, for you you just uh, you just catch up the first time and afterwards you just read the log of changes and apply it locally you're not actually replicating even though you you, it looks like you're replicating the, the 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 journal. You're not replicating the log directly. If you have an access log overlay there, 
which will become important later, you will actually end up with different entries locally than the ones that you replicated from. There's reasons for that, unfortunately. And that makes uh, things simpler in the short term. If you have multi-master, which I'll get over to soon, doesn't help. Uh, the problem that SyncProv has is it explicitly doesn't, doesn't deal with uh, one case. The case where the, the replica that you're trying to maintain can actually accept the rights. The rights usually then have to be forwarded back to the other replica and they have to cooperate. Um, if you have a look at the first one here, what happens, what happens here is you say this is the new state. If both of them have already uh, arrived at a new state, there's no way they can ever, they can ever merge into something newer. One of them would have to be dropped. If you if you can do if you can do more, then yes, you you're in a good position to potentially merge them. But if you can't if you can't do much more, you'll have to drop one, and then uh, unless you cooperate in some other ways, you're never gonna figure out uh, how to get from a a1 and A2 into something new. You're gonna you're gonna have to replace one of them. If you cooperate, you need to you need to uh, stop treating the cookie as opaque. Up till now, the clients were was always supposed to just trust the cookie. This is something that I pass over to the provider, and uh, don't care what's in it. It might even have a copy of the database. You're not supposed to see it anyway, so it's whatever. Uh, if since the since the since the replicas actually have to uh, have to maintain some shared state, that's where it's that's where it's managed. So in Open Labs implementation, the cookie actually stores uh, the the link ID. Let's let's call it link ID, the RID. Uh, each server ha get each. <coughs> Writable replica gets a server ID assigned uh, because clients don't really have a <coughs> uh, server ID or need for need for one. They get a zero assigned there by the by the server if they need a cookie uh, given by, given out by the server and change sequence number, which is a timestamp in Open Lab doesn't really have to be, uh, which becomes a vector clock. It's a it's a bunch of clocks, one for each server. So you know so you know uh, what's the latest state that's be that's uh, <coughs> represented in this copy. So you know I've already I've already caught up with transaction number twenty from <coughs> server one and transaction number two hundred from server two. If that's what, uh, if I've accepted another write, I'll, I'll increase the transaction counter or a timestamp, and uh, the other server knows that there's something more to come. If not, it it already knows. But yeah, it's fine. I'm, I can, uh, I don't have to transmit anything. The problem is that if you uh, the cookie actually has to store all of that in, in mo at most times. But you don't want to be transmitting that because you wouldn't know what's actually changed. You only want to transmit the information that's changed, which is this says uh, server one has actu actually been the source of this change. So other the other servers know not to transmit it back to it. And that's the, that's just for efficiency. Uh, if you have several servers, several replicas, one, two, three, and four, for example, so uh, the originating one is server one. It transmits it to two and three, and then those two communicate with each other. They would 
then happily send it off to each other, and then they would happily send it off to each other again because they've just realized something's coming new. So that all needs to be, uh, if, they, if they didn't know, if they didn't know that's actually originated from server one, they would, they would happily loop, loop forever. So you need to know. So you need to know where it originated and stop any loops. There's a bit more. Oh, uh, <coughs> so you only transmit part of the part of the new state, and any clients that do refresh and persist, the uh, persistent uh, replication, need to be aware of that and be able to deal with the actually understand and build a new cookie for when they actually talk to the server. That's where that's where the, the current implementation becomes has interoperability, potential interoperability problems with any other implementation that's out there. Because suddenly the cookie is not opaque and it can't actually replicate from a random source because of that. Uh, there's still a bit of uh, broadcast storms that need to be mitigated, but because we already store and know the server ID of the other server that we're talking to, we can limit those accordingly. We don't transmit. Replica 2 wouldn't send a, a modification back to Replica 1 if it knows that it's actually originated there. And it knows, although I don't remember how again, uh, it knows not to send stuff back to the server that actually sent it to it. So if, because these things fun out, and there's multiple ways from A to B, usually, unless uh, because you don't want a single link failing, uh, stop the entire uh, the entire thing from working. You'll still get the same modification from different sources, and you don't want to send it back to the source that actually delivered it to you. So that, that kind of stuff is being pruned. Uh, if you combine this with Delta Sync, uh, up till now, you, could, you, you were replicating a new version of an entry. If you're replicating changes, you really don't want to apply the same change twice. If you replicate the same entry twice, you get, with the, you get the same entry. If you replicate a change again, um, if there's an increment in there, you will end up with a different entry. <laughs> so, and the fact that we're in the distributed system, there are going to be conflicts, and there are going to be con there are going to be issues on uh, the communication side. The fact that links are uh, put prone to failure. There are actually going to be conflicts because these things will act on stuff before they've known the other the other rest the rest of the environment has actually accepted a conflicting change. They need to be able to deal with that. If you add a sa an entry with the same name on two different servers, you need to be able to deal with that. If you uh, delete its parent on one server and add this new entry. Uh, on a different one, they need to be able to deal with that. Any combination of modifies, deletes, renames, and adds makes a challenge. There's um, several ways of dealing with this. Uh, OpenLab goes for, let's say, convergence. Not exactly consistency, uh, convergence. At some point, you will get a the same copy on every server. It doesn't have to represent the, the operations that have exactly as they, as they come in. Uh, but at least you get the same one. It's last version bins, essentially. Because there's, a, uh, as I said, I mentioned transaction IDs. In OpenLab, it's actually timestamps. And the last timestamp the, the highest timestamp version of an entry is the one that's reflected in the database. So if there's two conflicting ads, the last one being added is the one that you'll see. If, there's, if changes happen, if you're doing the uh, change replication, they're the same. Uh, 
similar kind of uh, similar concerns are um, applied. So we'll give uh, consistency. We'll do availability to do uh, persistence and sacrifice availability. You need to you need to coordinate between between all the replicas and do something like two-phase commit or something similar. This is not uh, available to do in open lab at the moment. So uh, although we would like, I um, think most uh, environments would like consistency and persistence, that's because that could, uh, convergence and persistence, that would get you way closer to consistency, uh, not available. And we can't really do that at the moment. There's other ways of dealing with this. Uh, if you were at last LDAPCON, Ludwig Kuspens uh, gave uh, an outline of what they do in 389. It needs much more data or to be, be stored on the server, and but the the resolution can be uh, closer to what's actually intended. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the that's the alternative. If you're deploying this in production, there's some things to be aware of. One of that is with OpenLDAP, you rely on clocks. And if you want to get uh, fewer conflicts, your clocks better be synchronized. Uh, the protocol is not very chatty, actually. Uh, the fact that plain sends full entries uh, is is okay as, uh, for single provider, small entries. You can switch to Delta Sync, which gives you even even less of an overhead. In multi-master environments, there's still a lot of duplication of messages. It's uh, getting a protocol uh, that would enable and disable links as they are necessary to maintain full connectivity is something of a challenge i don't think i've i don't think i've uh, seen a decent paper that could that could uh, do that in a distributed environment so <coughs> let's go over the the things that could go wrong in mmr before i have to uh, uh, conclude there's as i start, uh, i outline one of the issues if you're doing if you're doing uh, MMR, this is a full reset. And if one of the servers does that, it can't reliably reproduce any further changes. It needs to start over. Because it doesn't know what's, it doesn't know how to, how to do any better. The other, the other concern is the fact that you have several, several paths from one node to another. Uh, you need to be to, to provide convergence. You need to make sure that whatever you're doing, uh, you're essentially racing with yourself. The 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 changes happening changes happening in your environment. Uh, since you're not replicating a log, you don't, you're not building a replicating a replicated log. You're just sending changes as they happen, and over links that can go away at any point. Uh, and uh, you might be, you might, the, the end point might be receiving them from different, from different uh, intermediate replicas as, as wh whatever happens, uh, and needs to decide what to do with them. This is something, so let's say you create, you, ch you, re you move an entry and Another server creates another one. These two can 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 and will arrive at different servers in a diff in a, in a different order. Some of the servers will receive the two of them in one order. Another one will receive them in a different order. But they might be passing that information over to to another node that's uh, uh, doing the same. That's that receives uh, this information potential that's already received half of the information some from somewhere else and you need to be able to deal with that consistently 
uh, a lot of uh, uh, there's especially once you once you get into delta MMR. Did I have that? No. Oh yeah. Once you get into delta MMR, that gets a bit more complicated because of uh, the fact that you need you are actually trying to figure out what's changed and how to replicate that on onwards. Uh, the fact that you trying to send cookies as single change cookies and you might not get a cookie with a with a change because there's several changes that uh, can't be reordered accordingly uh, means stuff gets quite oh, if we move that uh, gets uh, the, the you get quite a bit of state explosion and uh, so that means there's bugs. There's bugs that might be fixed at some point. There's bugs that will not be fixed anytime soon. And there's stuff to, to work on for the in the future. So I mentioned that the session log is running within the, within, uh, in memory. Uh, there's plans to make use of the access log data to, to use a, se a session log source. Uh, that might land at some point soon, but it's not helped by the fact that the following one, uh, the fact that when we're doing the the refresh uh, part is the present phase and delete phase. If in at the moment, if you if you're in the middle of delete phase and ter terminates that session, you might get an inconsistent result that is a bit into, intertwined with, with that and the fact how we do it with cookies. And uh, so they might land in the sa at the same time. There's a bigger issue. The fact the reset, if you do present phase, uh, ref no, refresh, if you do a ref just present refresh, uh, you've reset the database. And if you, if you, com if you have several databases uh, Trying to do the same at the same time, one of them has to win, and only one has, one of them can win. This is not handled correctly because I don't know that's happening. Uh, there's small, small change, small issues that are usually fine, apart from small environments, uh, uh, delta MMR environments. Uh, if you not, if you're not careful is that context CSM to save writes to the database because you have to write extra data on every change uh, to be able to, to build a new cookie after you restart, after you, uh, for a new session. Uh, it's not actually saved in the database, so Slapcat would not see uh, the live data correctly. And the fact that overlays mess with uh, the LDAP data model and the protocol on, and the uh, session in ways that don't make things simple. I think, well, I've had several conversations about member of being a uh, common example. Many other overlays can mess with more things uh, a bit more. <laughs> and the the solution is often have the overlay understand what to do in a replicated environment. And that just brings more complexity into the overlay and in the interaction between them. That's not always desirable. Uh, what are the plans? As I said, fixing those bugs, getting a persistent session log. Uh, the fact that the cl uh, consumer and the provider are separate pieces of code, one of them is in core and one of them is a uh, an overlay, getting them together, potentially support transactions, so we can do we can do better on some fronts, and maybe you could help with uh, with any of the above and helping us set up a uh, running test bed and maybe finding a way to uh, deal with the fan out the fact that you, that there are too many messages going out at any point that we can actually provide. And we could actually provide uh, persistence com uh, rather than availability if someone wanted it. So the environment would be, a, if the environment could actually be aware of uh, changes coming through. It could be implementing two-phase commit. 
where transactions would help, or it could be something else uh, on the meta level, just being uh, having having the <coughs> the servers aware of what's uh, what links are available and the fact that they are in uh, they have a quorum essentially. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, other than thank you. Mm -hmm.